Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. In this episode, we are publishing the earliest known audio interview with the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne. It's also the only audio interview with Ozzy relating to Black Sabbath's Sabbath Bloody Sabbath album. Unearthing a rarity like this is the whole reason I started this podcast. At the time of the interview in 1974, Ozzy was 26 years old and was promoting Black Sabbath's Sabbath Bloody Sabbath album and tour. The interview is conducted by Steve Rosen, one of the true legends in rock journalism. Rosen has a career spanning 50 years, thousands of articles, and several high-profile books with artists like Black Sabbath, Prince, Randy Rhodes, and many others. But his most notable work is his recent Eddie Van Halen book, Tone Chaser. Tone Chaser is considered a must-have book for Eddie Van Halen fans and any music fan. No other book has uncovered so many untold stories about King Edward. Please go to the link in the description and go to Rosen's website to learn more. This is not a paid endorsement. I truly believe Rosen's book is a must-read and happily promote it and endorse it. A note of caution, Ozzy's accent is very thick here, and with the tape being almost 50 years old, it can be hard to understand what's being said at times. If you're listening on a podcast platform, then I highly suggest you watch this on our YouTube channel with captions. Please let me know in the comments if you think I got any of the captions wrong. I did my best, but it was difficult. One last thing about this rare interview. In the description, you will find a link to an article that Rosen wrote about the day he met Ozzy and Sabbath in 1974 and did this interview. The article is funny, insightful, and a good companion to this interview. Thanks again so much to Steve Rosen for allowing me to share this with all of you. And now it's time to open the vault. I did the whole, I mean, the concept of Black Sabbath, the live average, yeah, it's just sort of, you know, just. I used to go to school in town, and I used to know, I used to always work in the Senate professional group. We could do that. And we just sort of met and formed and just chose Black Sabbath as a night, and that was it, you know. How long had you been playing them in the jazz and blues and the first album? Right. Not jazz and blues. About a year. But I mean, how did the first album evolve out of that? Well, we just thought, let's try to put music over in a different angle. And the music sounded, you know, it's sort of like it's evilly sound, you know. It's this, uh, this heavy, doomy sound. Why do you think people latch on to that? You know, that's I like haven't got a clue. An antagonistic type music. I really haven't got a, I haven't got a clue. Really now. I, I don't really know because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, you know. I can't see the side what it's like to, to, as, a, as a people. Because I, 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 I play it, I don't listen to it as, as such. I'm, I make the music, so I listen to it, they, you know. They get either get up, we don't get up. Do you think, I mean, like when you first started, do you think that people thought off stage you were, uh... Oh, yeah, we used to have all this bullshit down. Really? Just like, there's fucking witches and freaks phoning us up. I used to play at Black Mass. Oh, uh-huh. it's clear. You're probably one of the few bands that you can to stay together, I mean, for like over two or three years. Yeah, well, each and, we started as we are now, we still, we will carry on as, as long as we can together. We haven't, we haven't never had any sort of uh, ego battles in the band, you know. No, nobody sort of down on anybody else. You know? We just all got band of guys together. Yeah, but that's what's caused all the dance break out. I think that's a lot of it, and a lot of it's overwork as well. Like we just come back now to work after laying up for up just over a year. But the reason why we, we laid up is because we needed a rest. We've never had time to sit back at home and think about things. You find yourself playing in kind of a a pipe piper on stage. When I first started, I mean, I think a lot of people really turned on Ozzy Osbourne, what you said and what you did. I don't really know. All I, all I go at uh, just some stage, I, I, I go out and I like to feel that people, I like to try and put over it. I'm, 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 I'm playing with an honest gig, you know, and making like it feel people. I like people to get loose. I like to see people enjoy themselves. I don't like to see people get hurt. I said, I like people, it turns me on, you know. And the more they go, the more I feel. And like, and like, and it builds and builds, you know, it just carries on, you know, going and going. And I heard you talk about like, last night about the Black Sabbath album, and you know, the money aspects of it. I mean, you said you really don't care about the money. Well, I don't care about the money. 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 I
I, I do and I don't because like I don't I never I never go out and think about the bread and the milk. I didn't fucking all I want to see is that all I want to go out and see is the kids there and enjoying what I'm playing to them. And I mean, I don't I don't go on stage thinking fuck man I've earned five dollars ten dollars you count them bread as it's going along. I don't want to know man. It's not, it's not, I'm not in it for that. I'm in it just to purely turn people on, you know. And I do it as best best of way I can, you know. I mean, like, for years, I was bumming around for fucking nothing, you know. I got screwed out of a lot of money from time to time. In previous other ventures I'd, I'd done before the band, I'd always been ripped off by people in the past. And and I think, well, fucking hell, man, if that's where it's at, man, I don't want, I don't want to know. Man. All I want to do is be able to have a comfortable life, feed my kids, Feed my wife and put a roof over their heads and make sure my kids have a good, good upbringing. You know, good, a good upbringing. Whereas, like, I, my parents give me the best one as I could, but like, I can just give them that a bit more. You know. Do you think of any new album that that South is going in a really different direction? I think. Um, what do you mean? In what way? I mean, uh, yeah, I think. I think um, it's going in a better direction. Yeah. And it's definitely going to a better direction. Uh, you never sort of uh, when you when you start to record and write an album, you never sort of sit down and say, "Well, we'll put it in this way." Or we'll, we just sort of <laughs> sit down and sort of it just happens. It's just born, you know. You never know what it's going to turn out like. It's just it's just something that's born and it's there, you know. I think this last album, is one of well, he's the best one we've ever done. If this is anything to go by, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to the next album or the next but one or the next but one but one. You know. You know, it's just incredible. Like, I, can, I can't believe it. Man. It's almost like it's almost like the stimulus bill of the Black Sabbath album, but yet it is. Yeah, I think it's, it shocked a lot of people. It shocked me. It shocked <laughs> the shit out of me. Man. I didn't even... Was there something that I mean that just that caused it? I just don't know. I just haven't got a clue. <laughs> I've been to a wedding party. That's what I was going to ask you about that. What happened? A couple of weeks. We just got stoned all the time. You know. We couldn't think because we'd got volume four together, you know, like, and we thought that, that being away from home made us work more and get into it more. But it was just like a party from times. It feels like a holiday, man. Just crazy all the time. I mean, whose idea was to, I mean, to add the strings and bad pipes and. Well, it was just, a, a, we just try it. We thought, well, fuck it, man. We'll try everything. We, we try anything and everything. If it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's bad. It's, 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 it's not music, you know. Try, try anything once, because like, with a record, I believe that you're putting out a product. A product, you know? Was any of the band, I mean, did they, any of them ever study or read about Black Magic that at all? No. No. I mean, it was just, it was just a concept. Yeah. That, that... Well, it's like uh, anything. It's like, um, we got sick and tired of it and all this bullshit, you know? And that's, uh, you love your brother and flower power forever and, and really? meeting a okay. chick on the corner and you're hung up on her and all this. This is all a fallacy then. and a dream. Oh, well, 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 oh we, 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 we brought things down to reality, you know. We put yeah. our, our songs yeah. r real, yeah. a, real, a real thing behind it, you know. Which I think people want, at the time, people must have been wanting to hear something real for a change. A lot of people would probably say our music's probably the most easiest music in the world, you know to uh, understand but we don't we don't go out to say that we're the best musical or you know technical band in the world you know mm -hmm. just sort of ordinary backstreet guys who learn to play couple and learn to play guitars and sang and but and drums and things and we're just making a, a sound which which is just free sort of suburban rock if you like slum rock you know you know i don't know what you can call it there's been so many different bags we've been put into you know And it started like, um, perhaps it's the way our environment evolved our minds, you know. So it was always sort of beg and borrow sort of trip all your life, you know. Always, you know, you always wanted something. Fulfillment, you always really wanted something badly. It was, you always in, it was in need of something. You feel, you feel fulfilled? I think it's tremendous, you know. I love it. And uh, I've got no desires. There's a rumor going on that the band was splitting. I don't know, I don't know but that rumor, that, but it's, it's, a, it's a fool because the band now is stronger and more together than ever. You know, I love the guys. You know, the energy for them. You're making your own solo album. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not definite. I, I, I have it in mind. 
I wrote a few things. I, I, I wrote the basis to track of Who Are You on the synthesizer thing and the like, and Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And uh, it was a heavy trip and, and we decided to put it on the album. But uh, it's going to be similar to that trip, you know. And, and the album. Rick Wakeman kind of. No, no, no. I just didn't have myself. We didn't, it didn't do that at who, are, who Are You with Sabbath Cadaver. We did a Who Are You. I, I think an interest in the album also is the fact that like, you've all produced yourself. And like this, well, this, this is the recording quality of it. We, we, never, we never had, we never had um, chance to get into the technical side of it before, you know, because we were working all the time. I mean, are you, are you satisfied with the result? Uh, okay. Is it is a long process? When you produce your own album. Oh, it's a drag. Yeah. And so at the end of it, you think to like, fuck it, man, let's yeah. go home. Yeah. Is it hard? Oh, it's yeah. really hard. Yeah. Why not just yeah. bring in a producer? Yeah. No, I, I don't see how anyone can listen to my music yeah. and put it down, yeah. tell me how my music should sound or our music should sound. Yeah. When he hasn't been with the band for yeah. more than a day or so. If you think there's a new emphasis on lyrics in the band, on the vocals. What do you mean? I mean, the words are now as important as the music. They always have been. Always have been. I mean, um, the words, and even right back to the beginning, were really heavy words, you know, very intense words, very personal words. Have you found that during certain times that, that the band is more popular than others? Like, if there's... Uh, if if the if the if the country itself is kind of down, I mean, you find the music. I mean, um, to, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I mean, people are always asking me sort of really deep questions like what you're just asking me. I honestly don't know because I don't sort of read the newspapers. I don't sort of watch the news and sum up the why the big depression cloud that's hanging over the world today and much of it. It happens. It just comes out. You know? What can I say? I don't know. Um, uh, is it correct in saying that, that Sabbath has been kind of slagged by the press? Oh, you bet. Yeah. That's the understatement of the year. <laughs> That's fucking hell. When have you guys ever said anything good about us? <laughs> Why is that? I have, well, everybody's, got a, everybody's got a Skype, guys, haven't they? Are, there, are you working on a new album? Oh, yeah, we're going to a Dynamite album at the end of the year. I like, I tell you, it's a big one, and it's a really like to do a lot more mellower stuff on record. But I, I dig rocking on stage. I get bored when I start singing a ballad or something like that. I really get pissed off and stuff, you know. Maybe. My kids are going, Yeah, I'm going to fuck you, I'm going to fuck you. That's all I want to hear, an Iron Man paranoid war piece. Snowblind, sweet leaves, and that's it, man. That's their list, they're done. That, that one album seems to have all the songs on it. Look, I think I listened to that album for the first time in, in a long time in the week, and I thought, fuck it, no, man. It wasn't that bad, was it? You, know? you said you'd like to get into, like, uh, you know, mellow stuff like that. But I'm going to do that on my own. Yeah. Sorry? I'm going to do that on my own. Video. I, I dig singing spicy things with electronics. I like to, uh, I think it's empty enough to do it. It's empty, empty feeling, however. Depth, depth and distance. But it's just like forever. You know what I mean? It's like looking into the void. And you know, I hear that sound. You know, like, uh, who are you? I wrote that in the kitchen. What I want to cook in some food. I put the synthesizer in the side. When I was fucking about it, I had a tight between. And just turn out. First thing I've ever written on my own. I've never played an instrument. I don't even know what the fuck I've played. Now I've played it, you know. I really don't know what 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 key or chord or what what notes I've played. The sound. That's the best of it. That's the best of what, where I get it. It's that fire. I can sort of make a sound with something other people are like without getting into music or something. You don't say, no, that's a G major, S sharp, you know, all the shells of all the old, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, when they start talking, maybe we'll play this one in F sharp or A nine. You know, I think it's not the name. It's kind of that number to me. Not an address. You think that's too much flat for the whole band? I think man, man was born. He 
and the third thing he'd looked at him was plunk some of like a sound or something. And he liked that sound and saw that he was good. <laughs> and all the rest of the thing you know, went out from there. That was the right thing he did. And then he started to put numbers to this thing. And, you know, and that was a bit of a freak one. He started to write on his little stone wall. So if I come to the rock with his stone, he'll make such and such a thing. Then you go into the jungle and you hear some incredible sounds, you know. The realization people and things. No, seriously, though. You know, I mean, they don't even know what the fuck they are saying, but some of the rhythms they come out with, you mind that? Would you like to do my funny trips as I say? I do occasionally. I know, I think I'm going to do one with you, but I always do that. I do occasionally, but I don't, I don't profess to be a, a, a musician, I don't even want to know what the fuck I'm playing when I play it. I, I don't, I can't, I can't play a piano. You don't have to use one thing on a synthesizer. That's, that's my bad, that's my fucking bad. <laughs> Where I'm at, like, one thing, you fucking go like, Liberace is one thing. Like, like the album, if I, if I do record an album, I'm going to call it Am I Going Insane? I've written a track called Am I Going Insane? And I'm always, I'm always questioning me. I'm always looking at me. Yeah, we're going to do the fucking album. Yeah, yeah. We're out of it. Yeah, I mean, I'll come by your room for you know, I'm going to lock you up one day. A lot is the, is the reason yeah. for making your own album because it's okay, stuff yeah. next to the Wolf of the Day? Yes, no. Really? Like, I'm into electronics. One was yeah, really? the to electronic yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we, dis- we discovered that I like the heavy stuff. Tony loves mellow stuff, personally, playing. Peter loves heavy but mellow combined. And Bill loves lonely stuff. He loves playing very lonely and, and very sort of sad stuff, you know. And combined, it must fucking clash and play like this fucking weird freak thing, you know. It's really heavy, you know. I mean, it's a really fucking weird, it's weird stuff to be in, you know. You know, I don't know, you know. I don't know if the time he's had one down it. He had a type of shit, and I switched it on. And it was like fucking, he had a melody, he'd do this thing with a piano, piano and a melaton. It sounded like a fucking symphony. I said, fuck it, man, what's this? You know, I was putting it back with a band. No, it's coming out. He's going to use it. It's about right. I believe like this volume, volume four is like the beginning of a new trip for it. Sabbath, very Sabbath, is like the same stage two in it. And we've got stage three and four to go through. Volume four really opened our eyes, you know, what, 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 what we can do, what we can sort of venture into. Right. It's like opening another door. I mean, I could turn to myself one day, we're going to make, we're going to, Make the brick wall. And, I, and like, like the last album, I think, oh, fuck, you know, and the next album, I'm going to be back my card to find some people. But just happens with the writing the songs now, so, you know. How come there are, duh, I mean, like, more, more vocals of the band? You know, like, I heard, like, Weezer and Bill that kind of singing, you know, around the table and stuff. And some of them can both sing. Yeah, but, um, you know, this one could have never really tried that, so you know, you can sing it. I'd love to play the guitar. I'd love to play the guitar. Have you, uh, have you taken any lessons or anything? Or oh, yeah, I only got fucking busting the guy over the head. <laughs> the guitar did something like that. My guy was a trick or something. You know? Yeah. No, it's probably a good thing to get a style. It's your right thing to run them, you know. But the one, I had this one guy teaching me, he's very good, you know. He told me a couple of stories, but I got bored. You know, I want, I want to pick up the guitar and play. I don't have to go to the bullshit of learning, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to, I was like, I'm a runner before I can walk, you know. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm an Eric Clapton before I can turn it around, like I'm like turning the guitar up, you know. And I'm, and I'm disappointed that he doesn't work. <laughs> Rick Whiteman, he's, he's an incredible man. He's a guy. He's a good guy. Oh, he's beautiful. I love the guy. I love him. I really do. Any other guy in the world, and, and, and it would never happen. That's what I hope the band never split. But if the band never did split, and it, it, it's very, very fucking remote, very remote, it's, it, it never will be, you know. But if it ever did, you know, and, and I choose another guy to work with, I think I choose Rick. You can blow anybody off the fucking stage. 
You know, just good naturally. But he doesn't go around sh- broadcasting how good he is, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't even keep on listening to good keyboard playing. I'm not just a fan. But like, it's beyond the keyboard player with Rick Wankley. The guy is just incredible. I, I, you know, we were recording, we were recording in the same studio. We used to have a drink together and a chat. And just, you know, it's social, you know, you forget what you, you know, is, you know, what he is and you are what you are, you know. Down to earth. People drinking, you know, and we check playing cards in the bar. Loving on you. Really, really did a big bigger. He was really the gig in Birmingham, and he was going to come up and do a jam with us on the stage, and we did the Sabbath or whatever. But he was doing Tommy in London, and he sent, sent me a really nice telegram to him. He said, Follow your opinion. Most guys wouldn't give you the time of fucking day. Yeah, he's not fucking joking. Did I have one of the albums? I really would, yeah. Yeah, um, I feel that it wouldn't be me, you know, if you, Ozzy Osbourne or Rick Whiteman, and, and it would probably go anyway, and the strength of Rick Whiteman's success on his own anyway. I did to work with it, I really would. You know, it was just the one record. Mm-hmm. But I can't say that that's going to happen because we both sort of, sort of uh, committed to our own record complex, right. and, you know, it's going to be a big bullshit trip to get to go. You were mentioning down in that the cafe that uh, I mean, like, you went to go for so long that I mean, your little daughter didn't, didn't know you and stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, mean, I don't never want to go through that shit again, man. It's, I mean, it's not that bad now. Oh, no. Me and my, my kids are really together now. I and mean, you never go through that again. Well, if, if, I, if I had to, I would. I suppose I would, but I wouldn't like it. You, 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 you sort of lose complete sort of communication with everybody. You go home like a stranger. It's like a, a, a distant uncle coming back from Australia or something every 10 years, you know. You know, what's happening to the house? It's changing. What's that over there? What's happening there? And it's built up around you, like, while, you know, while his eyes have been shut for six weeks. Is it hard to turn a state from this point? The sta- aside the, from the fact that it's farther away. The States, you, you can't... I mean, this is touring in America, is. This is what I call it, a band on the road, you know. Because in England, you can tour it in two weeks. You know, and, you, and, and to do two weeks tour, or three weeks tour in England, like, you, you've done everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. <laughs> There's nowhere else you can go back to. I mean, then when you first saw I mean, you didn't... It was the press and, and the media that blew up Black Sabbath bigger than they were. What you mean? I mean, now that, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I can see that, I mean, you just four musicians. When, when Black Sabbath first started, I think that people thought that Black Sabbath was something far greater than that, that it was, that it was a whole aura. I don't understand what you mean. Evil, black magic. Yeah, I mean, that, that it, 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 well, it, well, it's, that music was just a vehicle of, of, of conveying all this. Well, all music's a vehicle to com- com- combine anything, you know. We just conveyed a different sort of, of uh, trip over to people, which is happening, which has happened, you know. Like, I would really have dug to, to do the soundtrack for The Exorci- Exorcist, you know. I really would I mean, I'd go high and do it. You know? If ever the chance comes again to do something like that, I really would like to do it, you know. It's like, when you're in, when you're in yourself, you can't sort of... Um, you can't relate to it yourself. You can't sit down and say, well, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's bad. Because, like, some of the things I thought were bad, kids have gone nuts over. And some of the things I thought were good, kids haven't really got off it. And you just don't know you, you just make it, you just produce it, you know? Just to kind of sum it up, the impression that I get from you is that, that people have the wrong impression of Black Sabbath them. People are digging it, you know? It's getting people off. Why condemn people's enjoyment? If we were, if people weren't buying our records and if people booed us every night and if people just didn't want to know, man, then I could understand it, you know? I really could understand it. Well, eventually it might happen, you know? Especially every, everybody has the day, you know? It might happen eventually. But not, today, now, 
people are digging it, and for the past four years, I've been really getting into it, and it's been helping them. I feel that I've helped them somewhat by my music. You know, if I die now, I can say, well, for five years, I turned people on and they enjoyed my music. If it was one or a one million, two million, five million, I've made those people get enjoyment, and I've given them something to 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 live for and get into. You know. It sounds a bit philosophical, I suppose, but this is the way I feel about it. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.